In Android, for making the network communications, we use the concept of async task. So, as I said, uh, if you want to make the network communications in the Android, so we would be using the async task. So, the obvious question that comes to our mind is why should we use the uh, uh, async task? Okay. So, in Android, uh, if you want to do some things which are taking more time to uh, execute, so we should always set those things inside a thread. So, in Android, there is a concept of UI thread and non-UI thread. Okay. So, I will again repeat, there is a concept of UI thread and the non-UI thread. So, what is a UI thread is? So, by default, when you execute your program, so that program execution happens in a thread called as UI thread. Okay, so let me write down the comment here. So, what I would do is, I would write down the comment, all below code will execute in the UI thread by default. Okay, so the UI part, uh, button part, list part, so all that things execute in the UI thread. But whenever we want to perform the network operation, we should not perform the network operation in UI thread. So I would write the sentence never perform the network operations in UI thread. Okay, so what is meant by never perform the network operation in the UI thread? So if you try to perform the network operation in the UI thread, so that what can happen is your application can freeze. So you must have experienced uh, this scenario many times. So when you open the Facebook or the Gmail, sometimes you may be uh, you may have experienced that that application just freezes for the couple of seconds and again it comes back to life. Life. Right? So why that happens? Because sometimes there is a code which executes on the UI thread and that code is taking the time for completion. So if your time uh, so if you have a code which is taking time to execute and it is getting executed on the UI thread, so your application just hangs. Okay, so let me show you uh, that let, let me depict you. So let's say you are writing a code, so you have got line one, you have got line two, and you have got line three. So what happens generally when your code execution is done? So line one executes, then your line two executes, then your line three executes. Right? So let's say line one is taking uh, 10 milliseconds to execute. Then your line uh, code, this code is taking let's say five minutes to execute, and line three is taking 20 milliseconds to execute. Okay. So guys, can you guess what will happen in this scenario? So let's say I have got three lines of code. I have written line one is taking 10 milliseconds to execute, line two is taking 5 minutes to execute, and line three is taking 20 milliseconds to execute. So what happens? So if you have such a code, so that time what happens? So when it reaches to line two, that time your application will freeze for the five seconds, five minutes, sorry, because line two is taking five minutes to execute. So if you open the application and you will see that that application freezes for the five minutes, then it becomes again it becomes irresponsible. Why? Because that execution is done and now the rest of the lines are executing which are not taking that much time. So this is a problem. Why? Because all of that code we have written on the UI thread and that is creating the problem. So the solution that we can have is we can move that piece of code on the non-UI thread. So UI thread will only contain those lines which are related to UI and UI uh, UI related stuff doesn't take much time to uh, execute, like putting a data inside a list view, setting a text on the button, handling the click events. So all that stuff is done pretty quick. It doesn't take time. So the code which may take more than let's say five seconds. So as per the Android rules, so any code which you think that may take more than five seconds, you should always put that code inside a non-UI thread. So what I have done here is I have written that piece of code in non-UI thread and now that what will happen it will keep on executing and once it executes then what it's going to do is it's going to give me a callback in the UI thread. Okay? So by that time my line 2 must got executed. So here I will get line 2 
callback. So what will happen? My line two will execute in the non UI thread, and once it gets the result from the server, it will give me a callback again in the UI thread, and I will update my widgets or something like that. So you would ask me, so what I'm going to do in that period of time? So that blank period you are seeing. So what I'm going to do in that period of time? So what I can do is, I can show the progress on the UI thread, right? So as I said, those five minutes I will be sending, I will be spending on non UI thread. So in that five minutes of time, what I can do is, I can show the progress bar or something like that on the main application, so that user will understand that something is happening in the background and he should wait. Okay, so I hope uh, that uh, picture is clear to you. So we are ex exactly going to do uh, that same stuff. So in Android, we would be using a class that is called as async task, as I said. So why we use async task? Because creating the UI thread, creating a non UI thread, if you do it manually, it is a very tedious job. But if you use async task, it becomes very easier. Why? Because when you have the async task, basically you will have three methods. One, you will have on key execute method. You will have next method will be doing background method, and the last one you will have it will be on post execute method. Okay, so whenever you extend the async task, you have to write three methods. These are the three methods: on key execute, doing background, and on post execute. So your on key execute by default runs in UI thread. So this method automatically executed in the UI thread. So you don't need to uh, worry about where that method will execute. Android will take a responsibility of that. Android will automatically perform that method's execution in the UI thread. Doing background will run in non-UI thread. And finally on post execute method will again execute in UI thread. Okay, so what I can do is uh, I can uh, write a piece of line one code in on to execute. Then I can write the line two code in doing background because as I said, it is taking more than five seconds to execute. And line three code I can write it in on post execute. So what will happen? The very first time on to execute will get called. My line one will execute. Then it will call doing background, but doing background will be called in non UI thread, so your application is going, not going to hang because it is running in separate thread. And once it get the results, it going to pass on that result to my on post execute. So in on post execute, I can execute my line three. So my program will not get affected, and also I will able to achieve what I want. So in the line one which I am showing you, so I will say show progress, and here I will say end progress, and here I will say let's say download. So in on the code, I will start showing the progress dialog. In doing by one, I will start downloading the data. Once the data is downloaded, it will automatically call on post execute where I would dismiss my progress dialog because I have received the data. Okay, so let me show you how you can do that. So what I would do is, I would first copy that URL. From there I want to fetch the data. So let me go on to the website. Let me copy the URL. Let me put it here. Okay, then the next thing that I am going to do is, uh, yeah, so let, let's, let's do one thing. I have got the list view. Let me create one more button. So on click on that button, I will populate the data. So I will have a button. I will have an ID. I will say button fetch data width will be match parent height will be lab content and it will be align parent bottom and 
what I would do is I create a list view and I would say since my button is going to sit at the bottom I will say my list view takes match brand match brand but it is above my button fresh data. Okay. So I would also write down the text as page data or page countries. Okay, so now you can see I have got the list view, below that I have got the page countries button. So when I click on that page countries button, it is going to show the progress bar, it is going to download the data. Once the data has been downloaded, it will dismiss the progress bar and finally it will populate my list view with those countries. Okay, so let me create the button object also. So I will create private button button page data. Page data is equal to button find me by ID I dot ID dot button page data and page data dot set on click listener this my activity will have to <coughs> sorry will have to implement the on click listener for that. So I will override a method on click. Okay, so after the on click method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the async task. So I will say class download task. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm creating a class, uh, let's say download task, which extends the a sync task. Okay, so as you can see, I have got a class which extends the async task. So now async task takes three parameters. Okay, so now let me take you through that uh, file again. So the first parameter it will take inside on the execute, sorry, inside doing background, it is going to download a data. So from which source it will download the data? So you need to give the URL, right? So that is your first argument. Second argument, it will ask you, do you want to show the percentage-wise progress or do you want to show the spinner progress? So what is percentage-wise progress? So by downloading a file, you show that 1% uh, downloaded, 2% downloaded, or you can show that please wait, and it will just keep on spinning. So there are two kinds of progress. So that parameter, you have to specify in second argument. So as I said, so what I'm going to pass to that class, I'm going to pass the URL to that class so that it can download the data. So the first parameter is your input parameter. So since I'm going to pass the URL and my URL it is in which form? String form. So I'm going to write string there. Second, it will ask you are you going to show a percentage wise progress or are you going to show the spinner progress? So if I'm going to show the percentage wise progress like 2% downloaded, 3% downloaded. So since that comes under the integer, so 2, 3, 4%, so all those are integers. So I would be writing integer there. But here if you see my data is pretty simple. So it is not going to take, uh, take even a second. That is a text file. So what I would be doing? I would be writing a void. What is mean by void? Void means I am not going to show the percentage. Rather I am going to show a spinner which will ask user to wait till the data gets downloaded. Okay. And the final argument that I would be passing is so here I told you, so in doing background you will download a data and once the data has been downloaded, you will pass on that data to the on post executor. Right? So when I say you will pass on that data to the on post executor, so that time on post executor need to know in which form you will be passing a data to it. Right? So that form we specify as a third argument. So I am I'm going to say that I would be passing a data or I would be getting a, a data from the server in string format because if you see here it is nothing but a string right so I am saying that my output data will be in string format so what I will do is I will just click on that red symbol and I will click on add unimplemented methods so I would be having on pre-execute then do in background 
bet on both sides. Okay, so let me delete comments. So if you see here, so when you give the input type as string, so you see in a doing background you get the input type as string, but you also get the three dots. So what is the three dots means? It is means it is a variable type argument. What is mean by variable type argument? It means it will it can accept it can accept more than one values. Okay, so let me show it uh, show you one example. So let's say I create a method like public void show and if I take one argument string name okay so when I call that method show so I can pass let's say report but if I try to pass winner it's going to give me an error why because it will tell it's not applicable for the multiple arguments but if I write dot 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 there so you can see my my error has gone away. So now it is going to accept more than one values. In fact, I can give third value of uh, third value also. Let's say Visha. So it is accepting those multiple values. So now how I will retrieve the values? So if I say name of zero, so it is going to return me Vipul. Okay. So if I say name of one, it is going to return me winner. So like that. So this is like your array only. You can pass multiple arguments to it and you can uh, get the arguments values based on the indexes. So what I'm going to do is now, so similar thing you can get, uh, you are getting here. So it means asyntax is telling you that you can pass as many as in you want. Okay, but in our case we are just going to pass one argument. So now my asyntax is ready. So you can see I have got the auto execute. I have got the doing background and I have got the on post execute. So in on post execute it has a parameter as string. Because third parameter we have given as string. So it is it is saying that in on post execute I would be getting a result from the server in the string format. 